multi-user operating systems um, are obviously designed f so multiple users can use them at once. That's the whole point of them being called multi-user. Um, obviously, with these, they're normally used for sort of big companies. Um, what companies will tend to do is is invest in one really powerful computer, like a server or something similar, and then lots of different people can use it at the same time. Um, so it might be the server set up to run virtual machines, um, which if if you've never seen a virtual machine before, that is a a computer that can run inside another computer. Um, and obviously anything that's done within this virtual workspace, so um, this virtual machine, um, it doesn't affect your main machine. Um, the best way I can sort of show it for this is this image here so as you can see there's there's multiple different machines running on one machine so this is one desktop and you've got virtual machines running one's got Linux on two have got Windows on I think that might be Windows as well or probably just um, uh, Chrome but it's got three virtual machines running at least so Linux and then two Windows machines that's how it works so uh, that would be considered a, a multi-user operating system so things like Windows Server count as it or um, or Linux like Apache they they sort of are designed for multiple people to use at the same time obviously like this is already preluded to on here it requires a lot of processing power like a lot of servers tend to have multiple CPUs so you have more than one CPU to deal with so usually one CPU will be for the virtual machines and one CPU will be for the actual machine itself running um, and obviously you can have multiple different hard drives, which if you've done RAID, you should already know this. Um, and then it will have a lot of RAM in it. So usually RAM can vary up to like 128 gigs plus, depends on what it is. Um, so yeah, so the, the computers are incredibly powerful because the processing power that in, that's needed for it is ridiculously high. So um, obviously because... Um, it runs several users at once you can get it to run the same application as well so it's not necessarily a virtual machine you could get it to run the same application at once so like Google Docs um, Google Docs I can go on to Google Docs right now and it will be completely different to your Google Docs when you go onto it because when you're onto it and I'm onto it. We'll probably use, we may use the same server in order to use it online, but it's doing two things at once. That will probably be a multi-user operating system that's being used on Google's end that we won't see. So it it depends on um, what you need the multi-user OS for. But usually multi-user OSs are used in companies for multiple people to work on one thing at the same time. It tends to be cost effective because you only need one computer and then you can literally just have terminals coming off it that are just designed to view what the server is sending out to the machines. Um, however, obviously, if that one computer goes down, that means that productivity will go down for every single one of them. Um, so you, it's a risk using that, but a lot of companies tend to use it alongside um, having specific computers for tasks as well so um, it, it depends as I said before what the multi-user OS is needed for